Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video, we're going to be simplifying a nice exponential expression. I'm just kidding, it's not nice at all, but we're still gonna simplify it. By the way, you might be coming from my very first channel, Cyber Math. If you did, please say hi in the comment section down below. And if you didn't, you can still say hi in the comment section down below. So we have an interesting scenario here. And if you're new to complex numbers, make sure to check out the lecture videos that I made. I don't think I'm going really deeply into this stuff. Maybe I should make some supplementary uh, lecture videos. Uh, I'm hoping that'll be helpful. But anyways, check out those videos and also ask a lot of questions because that's the best way to learn. So we have an interesting exponential expression here because we have, first of all, negative one at the base and E at the guitar. I mean, E is in the exponent, right? So why is that interesting? Because we know that if you raise negative one to, uh, let's say, to the second power, you get positive one, right? Don't you? Uh, oops, I said two, but wrote one. Yes, because two is even. If you raise negative one to the power 33, 33 is odd, the answer is gonna be negative one. What happens if you raise negative one to the power one half? Uh-oh, that's problematic. That's not real, right? It basically means the square root, but in, when it's written like this, it means the principal square root, and that'll be i. Because i is the imaginary unit whose square root equals negative one. In other words, i is the square root of negative one. The reason why I say the is because it's the principal square root. Of course, there are two square roots with the plus minus sign. If i is a square root uh, of negative one, then negative i is also a square root. Because when you square negative i, you still get the i squared, which is negative one. Anyways, hopefully it's not too confusing. Now, what does this mean? This doesn't mean anything. It just means when the exponent is an integer, we're in good shape. I mean, we could even do negative integers, couldn't we? Like negative one to the power, negative 1,000. All you have to care is the fact that negative 1,000 is even, so this is positive one. But E is neither odd nor even. So how do you know which one is which? Is the answer negative one, one, or neither one? Neither one of those, right? <laughs> okay, if this was a multiple choice question, what would you mark? Let us know. So we're gonna approach it differently. Obviously, it's not as easy as squaring negative one, which is always gonna give us one, correct? Yes? Shake your head, right? Great, so let's go ahead and see. So we have something called, thanks to Euler, uh, the polar form of a complex number. When you have a complex number, and again, I go over these in lecture videos, but basically, when we have a complex number, we can kind of plot it in the Argand plane, this is called the Argand. Let me write it down so people are not confused about the spelling with a D at the end, Argand plane. And there's a real part and an imaginary part, right? And we can basically plot a number just like a point or a vector. So let's say this is Z equals X plus Y I. In the first quadrant, if X and Y are both positive, then those are gonna be the coordinates. If they're not positive, then they'll be in different quadrants. They'll be positive or negative, whatever, right? But we get an angle, theta, that's measured in the positive direction, which is the counterclockwise. So counterclockwise is positive, okay? Four angles. So what does this all mean, though? Well, Euler said that a complex number can be written as r times cosine theta plus i sine theta, where r is the absolute value of z or the distance from zero. Great. But he even said that there is a more compact form for this, which is replacing the cosine theta plus i sine theta by e to the power i theta. And this is the most beautiful equation, identity, whatever you want, you want to call it, in math, because it brings us the most beautiful equation. Maybe I'll, my, one day I'll make a video about it. But this is amazing. And it's Euler because he's amazing, right? So how can we use this information though? Well, if you can plot a number, then you can write it in this polar form. So let's go ahead and think about negative one. Where is negative one, right? Well, negative one is a real number. So it's gonna be on the real axis, right here. One unit away from zero, ta-da-da-da, -da -da, making 
pi radians in the positive direction, right? I said radians because a lot of times we use radians, not degrees for this. Now, does that mean I can write negative 1 as follows? The modulus is 1 unit, so I don't really need to write it, but let's just write it for emphasis. Times e to the power i times theta. Theta happens to be, in this case, equal to pi. So I can just write pi there, right? Yes and no. That's just the principal argument. What are you talking about? Well, we are allowed to add 2 pi to it. It's going to bring us to the same point. In other words, instead of writing pi, we can write 2 pi n, which represents a multiple of 2 pi. So you're allow allowed to add or subtract multiples of 2 pi to your principal argument, which is pi in this case. Okay? Great. So we were able to write negative 1 as an exponential, which is what's beautiful about Euler's formula. Of course, that makes him the best, in my opinion. But anyways, let's go ahead and see how that applies to our scenario. Remember what we talked about earlier? We said that, okay, negative 1 squared is 1. Let's check it out, right? Maybe it's not true. Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll make a breakthrough. So let's forget about this one and replace the negative 1 with e to the power i times the quantity of pi plus 2 pi n, which is a complex way to write negative 1 in the complex world. Now let's just raise it to the second power, and we're hoping to get 1 from here, right? <laughs> okay, let's see. Well, raising it to the po second power means just multiply everything by 2. So that's going to give you e to the power i times 2 times pi plus 2 pi n. And then this will give you e to the power i times 2 pi plus 2 pi n. Okay, so what is that supposed to mean though? 2 pi and 2 pi n, it just means a multiple of 2 pi. So why not write it as 2 pi k? k is another integer, which is n plus 1, right? But it's still an integer though. So now we're looking at something like e to the power i theta and r is 1. And theta is this angle right here, 2 pi k. But what is 2 pi k? A multiple of 2 pi. 2 pi can be 0, 2 pi can be 2 pi, negative 2 pi, so on and so forth. But you're always looking at this number, which is 1. So it's indeed 1. But such a complicated way to get 1. Why not use it for our expression, right? So our problem was raising negative 1 to the power, oops, to the power e. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to raise it to the power e. Replace negative 1 with what it is, e to the power, and what was it? I forgot. i times pi thing, right? Yes. i times pi plus 2 pi n. And now we're going to go ahead and raise it to the power e. And that'll become the following. e to the power i e multiplied by pi plus 2 pi n. And then this will become e to the power i times, I'll distribute the e inside, e pi plus 2 pi and e. By the way, e is about 2.7. So you're basically looking at 2.7 times 3.14 something, and then 2.3.14, which is 6.28, multiplied by n, multiplied by e, so on and so forth. But what happens if n is equal to 0, for example, right? You kind of get a simpler version of this, which is e to the power i times e pi. So this becomes our angle. And we can actually write it by using the formula e to the i theta is cosine theta, again, thanks to Euler, plus i sine theta. So e to the power i times e pi. Let me put that in parentheses so you can see that this is indeed our theta. Cosine of e pi plus i times sine of e pi. So whatever e pi is, multiply e and pi, two very irrational transcendental numbers, and then find the cosine of it, find the sine of it using a calculator, but don't worry, I did it for you. And now, negative 1 to the power e, are you ready? Drum roll, ta da da da, is equal to this. That's an approximation, but you can also write it roughly like this. Just a complex number, right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, 
And don't forget to check out CyberMath and A plus BI. And bye-bye.